All right. Good morning or good evening, wherever you may be. Uh, this is Rachel Friesen with the Drupal Association. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started and give a little bit of an update on DrupalCon Asia and where we're at in the planning process. Uh, we've had a lot of interest as far as uh, what's the latest and greatest and, and uh, people being really eager to get involved. So uh, we're going to kind of just uh, recap a couple things that people may already know, but also just give updates on where we are and, and who, uh, who the people at the DA are that are, are working behind the scenes to get things, get things rolling. Um, at this point, it looks like everybody is muted. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, type them into the questions box. Uh, Megan is on the call and she's going to help me keep an eye on that and we'll try to get to some of them as we go, but we may uh, hold a few towards the end. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and jump on in. Uh, so here's our agenda. We're going to kind of uh, do a little bit of introductions, talk about who's who's who at the Drupal Association, uh, talk about the DrupalCon Asia goals, um, some of the sp sponsorships and financial information that's kind of powering the con behind the scenes. Uh, we'll talk about the actual program of the con, how the days are going to be structured, and then Lee will join us and talk about the marketing that we're doing for DrupalCon Asia. And at the end, we'll talk about a bunch of different ways that people can get involved. Um, so let's just jump right in. So this is Team DrupalCon. This is where everybody on the team figures out that I pilfered photos of them from their Facebook pages. Uh, so we've got, these are the people that you may have already met who are, who are actively working on uh, DrupalCon Asia. We also have a whole host of people behind the scenes that, that you may not have met. We've got a wonderful tech team in Tim Lennon, Jacob Perry, and Emily Nouveau, who've um, been working with our, our local designer in India and have launched the beautiful Splash page. And so let's just go ahead and meet everybody one-on-one. -on -one. So this is Megan Sanicki. You may have met her uh, when we were doing our site visit in January. Uh, internally at the DA, she leads our sales teams and events teams. She's their chief operating officer. And specifically for DrupalCon Asia, she's really uh, focused on sp selling sponsorships and working with the business community um, and doing some engagement at kind of a higher level rather than the more day-to-day -day, um, con planning level that a lot of the rest of the team is working on. So this is me, Rachel Friesen. Uh, I was also uh, on the site visit in January in 2015. Uh, I manage the events team, so we put on three Drupal cons a year and a couple other events that we help manage for the Drupal Association. And for DrupalCon Asia, uh, I'm really responsible for um, putting together kind of the structure for the team and making sure that all of our contracts and um, uh, any kind of like legal documents. Those are all set up and manage our budgets, help set goals and, and approve things on a daily basis. Uh, this is Amanda Gonzer. Uh, she's our lead DrupalCon coordinator. She's our DrupalCon programming guru. So she is the one that kind of uh, coordinates uh, the community when it comes to selecting sessions, um, organizing summits, and she's also our essentially our internal client for our DrupalCon website. So she makes sure that those websites are up and running and have the content we need and the, the features that we're looking for. So she's our liaison to the tech team. And this is Tina Kraus, who may be new to you. Tina is kind of a behind the scenes uh, wizard for us. She uh, runs our DrupalCon uh, registration and customer service. So, for instance, if you're submitting contact us forms and you're looking for help either with finding information about your ticket or what comes with that, um, if you have visa letter requests, uh, she's the one that issues those visa letters. And she's also an, a great project coordinator. She helps us make sure that we have, you know, con t-shirts and uh, coordinates our program guide and, and does a lot of things behind the scenes. So that is Tina. And this is Tim Constein. We call him T-Con. He, um, oh, I'm, <laughs> I forgot to update the bottom line, but he works with our sponsors. So uh, Tim is our sponsorship fulfillment coordinator. So uh, when sponsors sign up to be a, a sponsor for DrupalCon, they get a, a host of benefits. And Tim works with them to make sure that they get all those benefits and that they get the most out of those benefits. So he works with the sales team, although he's not a salesperson. He just helps uh, make sure that, that the people who uh, sign up get what they want and find ways to kind of engage with the community if that's something that's new to them. And this is Lee, Lee Carver. She is our content writer at the Drupal Association. So she, um, if you've received, for instance, like the Drupal Association newsletter, or she's done some amazing community spotlights, 
Uh, she does a great job of, of highlighting what, what the Drupal Association is doing, but also what the community is doing. And for DrupalCon Asia, she's um, working a lot with our um, con communications and helping coordinate our marketing efforts and, and being that point person for um, community volunteers who want to help with um, social media and marketing and kind of getting the word out. All right, so jumping into uh, the goals for DrupalCon Asia. So uh, there were, when Megan and I were on our site visit, we realized that there are just a host of things that we could do with DrupalCon Asia, but we kind of needed to focus in on on what the things were that we could realistically do with our with our staff and uh, our budget and uh, what we were really trying to accomplish with, with this event. So the first thing, obviously, is uniting the Indian community and connecting that community with the world. So... Um, one of our main, or well, two of our main goals for Drupal cons are to grow the community and to strengthen the community. And uh, obviously, by holding the con here, we think that this will be a great way to strengthen the community, both as far as like local leadership, but also growing people's um, Drupal skills. And uh, it's a great way for us to share knowledge and partnerships across borders. We've heard from quite a few people that uh, they are beyond excited about coming to India for this Drupal con um, from all over the world. Um, another uh, primary goal for DrupalCons in general, which definitely applies for this DrupalCon, is to accelerate the project. Um, and so th that primarily takes the format of sprinting. And uh, India already has proven that they are excellent contributors to Drupal. And so we are very excited to see what comes out of the sprints at DrupalCon Asia. Uh, we also uh, would like to grow the developer talent pool and skill level. So uh, we definitely want to help get the word out about Drupal. But in this case, we're really talking about growing the developer themselves, their talent rather than um, trying to recruit a lot of new developers to Drupal, although we hope that that's a wonderful byproduct of having this event. Uh, we also want to connect the talent with the employers. So one of the things we definitely heard while we were there is that the, the employers there are hungry for more Drupal talent, and uh, technology is a very, um, there's a, it's a very open field in India. There's a lot of things that people can choose from, so we want to make sure that people uh, choose Drupal and, and connect with the right employers. Um, from a planning standpoint, we're kind of anticipating about 80% of the uh, community or 80 percent of the attendees being um, domestic from India and about 20 percent uh, from out of country. Uh, we believe that the breakdown will follow somewhat of what we've shown there, 70 percent developer, 20 percent site builder, and then five percent and of the C-suite from shops, and then f hopefully five percent evaluating Drupal. Uh, the one thing that we had to decide uh, primarily from a, a budgetary standpoint is we can't easily cater to students. Um, we financially just can't afford to offer a free or deeply discounted ticket for the for this DrupalCon. And we don't really have the space capacity to offer like a job fair or an introduction to Drupal outside of the training that we'll, we will be offering on Thursday. Now, this isn't to say that uh, we don't want students to attend and we don't want them to, <laughs> to be invited to attend, but that's just, that's an opportunity for the community to kind of step up that outreach. And, and uh, we've heard talk of people wanting to maybe um, kind of subsidize the tickets for students as a way to introduce them to Drupal. So that's a really great opportunity for the community or their employers to um, get that next wave of Drupal talent uh, engaged and seeing what, how, just how cool the Drupal community is. Um, so one of the other things we're not uh, specifically catering to is the CMS decision makers, potential customers. We don't, we don't have the capacity to just do a ton of outreach to try and recruit them to the event, but we are more than encouraging of the community to try and recruit those people to this event. So we're, we're willing to help support that however we can, but we, we just can't focus on that as a primary uh, goal for us. And we're, we're also not uh, tailoring the the programming of the con to specific groups. So we're not focusing exclusively on government or higher ed or just on you know business or nonprofits. Um, although there will be some specific programming for that on Thursday with some of the summits that we're going to be offering. Uh, so some of the key people and players that we've um, been working with to date, um, obviously we have a, a host of local volunteers who've been involved. We got to meet a lot of really great um, Drupal community leaders while we were there in the site visit. And so some of them have uh, continued to be involved and um, have been extremely helpful. Um, we will be working with an event planning firm called Laxia. Um, they are helping us coordinate some of the production details as far as actually executing an event in India. And then obviously we've been working um, really hand in hand with IIT, who will be um, our physical host, our space host for the event. 
So here's a quick snapshot of what uh, the DrupalCon, excuse me, what the DrupalCon schedule is. Um, truthfully, behind the scenes, we are working on finalizing a memorandum of understanding that will then um, allow us to essentially open up registration and formalize our payment gateways. So once that's in place, we will have a lot more um, a lot more deadlines that we can share. So more on how we manage the project and when deadlines would be for you know the end of sponsorship sales and things like that. But this is on the website now, and this kind of gives you a, a high level overview of the timing as far as you know, when sessions open and sessions close, when ticketing price changes happen. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see um, our, as of now, our plan for ticket prices. Um, because we're a US based company, we do our budget in US dollars, although uh, we will be selling tickets in rupees. So as of now, this is what the plan is as far as the rupees. Um, conversion. And then also there, at this point, this is the tax that we're estimating on top of that. Um, that's one of the things that we're finalizing in the memorandum of understanding. So once that's finalized, then we'll be able to publish those ticket prices and confirm those. But that, that's about the um, range where they will be. So this is our program plan for DrupalCon Asia. Um, if you've been to another DrupalCon in Europe or North America, you know that they often span sometimes up to <laughs> nine days. Uh, we're doing a bit of an abridged program. Uh, so on Wednesday, we will be um, doing some setup and we'll open registration. So if people want to come and pick up their badges, they are welcome to do that. Thursday, really, the, the pre-programming starts. So we will have um, a business summit and two other summits that, we, that are yet to be determined. And we are also going to be offering four trainings. Uh, one of them will be a free beginner training, more of like the introduction to Drupal type of, uh, type of programming. And then Friday and Saturday will really be our traditional con programming where there will be keynotes and sessions and boffs, uh, which are kind of conversational or topic rooms. And we will also have a sprint contribution lounge. And then on Sunday, we are really excited that we will have um, a full day of dedicated sprints. So we will be focusing on teaching people how to contribute to core, um, as well as providing space for people who are, you know, avid contributors, where they can do a little bit more um, in-depth uh, sprinting. All right, so now we're getting into the information about the session. So Amanda, I'm gonna turn this over to you to kind of talk about how uh, the programming team is structured and, and how the session selection process goes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Um, so when Rachel and Megan came to India quite a few months ago, um, they kind of were speaking with local community leaders about what kind of content would be good for DrupalCon Asia. And the topics that came out of that kind of discussion and those surveys are these following tracks that we have below. So if you click on that link, you can see a track description about each one of those, um, a little more in depth, but these are the tracks that we will have. Um, each track will have about seven or eight sessions in each of them, which gives us a total of 50 sessions for the con between those two days. So if you've never submitted a session to DrupalCon, um, it's probably very similar as if you've submitted it to a camp. Um, but basically you'll go through that link from the previous slide and you'll read the track description. And in that, it's a lot of information from the track chairs that explain kind of what the track is going to be about, what kind of information they're looking for, and even some suggested topics of things that they're looking for sessions on that they think would be very valuable to have at DrupalCon. So, um, we always ask that you try and just create a session submission that really tells about your topic. We want to know what the topic is. We want to kind of make sure that it's a exciting thing that isn't just regurgitating information. We want people to really want to know what you have to say. And you kind of, in your se session submission, need to be able to explain what you're going to cover and why that session needs to be at DrupalCon. You need to make it as appealing as possible because um, if you followed other cons, we do get hundreds and hundreds of submissions for only a few spots. So trying to provide as much information and explain what you're going to teach everyone is very important. 
We also ask that you fill in your user profile. This seems kind of like an easy thing and something that everyone would do, but a lot of times we get sessions from people we aren't really sure who they are or if they've been involved in the community or if they've presented before. But if you just want to fill out your profile, it's really easy to just give us a, a little bit of information about yourself, which helps us um, reach out to you if we have any questions. And just so you know, the deadline for submitting sessions is November 2nd. So um, you can also click on that link to go through the session's submission process. And just a reminder, if you have any questions about any of these um, topics, feel free to po uh, post them in the questions box, and we'll try and answer those as we go. So just to kind of give you a quick overview of how sessions are selected, when we close the call for papers on November 2nd, the selection committee will start reading over every single one of those sessions, whether it's 300 or 1,000, they read through every single submission, and what they're kind of looking for is what we ask that you put in with your session submission on the previous slide is we want topics that are fitting the track description that maybe appeal to one of the topics that they suggested or really fit into the theme that they're going for. Um, we get a lot of submissions with the same almost content. Um, we want to make sure that we're not providing a track with the same topic seven times, so we are looking for kind of different categories to make sure that we're not overlapping content or knowledge. We want to see that the speaker has spoken at past events. That doesn't have to mean a DrupalCon, it just means that you have speaking experience or you're confident um, in your knowledge. You just want to make sure that when you get up in front of a stage of 400 Drupalistas that um, you're still excited to share that information. And also that, that it's an exciting topic that we know that people at DrupalCon Asia will want to hear. So even if it doesn't show up in that track description and you think it's really exciting, definitely submit it. Um, one thing that people get a little nervous about sometimes is they're not sure which track to submit it to, uh, but we're constantly reading through the submissions, and so if you submit something to maybe site building and we think maybe it would be better in coding and development, we don't just discard your session. We definitely move it over and have the coding and development team evaluate that. So each selection committee has three people who we're going to see um, on the next slide, but it's at least three people, and that really helps eliminate biases. Um, and by the 23rd of November, after they've read through all of these sessions and kind of ranked them um, to put together the best program per track possible, all speakers will be notified by November 23rd when we publish the selected sessions. Um, we get a lot of questions, of course, about session selection, and this is only a few seconds explaining it. So if you want to know the real in-depth process, feel free to click on the next link, which is a lot of information about how we get from opening the website to selecting the sessions, all the steps. Um, we also wanted to give you a heads up that the selection committee, as the sessions come in, you can click on the proposed sessions, you can see which ones have been submitted. They're already reading through them, so we encourage them as sessions come in to kind of look them over, to kind of have an idea what's coming in, and if they have any questions, we encourage them also to reach out to the speaker, that would be you, if they maybe want you to provide information or clarify something. So. So keep an eye on your email or your D.O. contact information just because we want to make sure if they're reaching out to you to try and make your session submission better that you get that email because it definitely could be a make or break kind of question. So our session selection team is made up of kind of two prongs. We have locals who are from basically the time zone of India and provide some regional oversight into the content that would be relevant for an Asia con. We also have globals who are people who have worked at DrupalCon like this before and they kind of provide some experience and guidance on the process. Um, not so much the specific nuances of each community's content, but they provide a lot of help when it comes to the steps to pick the selections and kind of ranking styles and just kind of when you get into a tough tough situation. They've definitely done it at least once before and are great mentors in that aspect. So 
These are the local team. Um, as I mentioned, when Rachel and Megan came to India a couple months ago, during that survey and kind of discussion points, these are people that kind of rose to the top as people that would be great leaders for these different tracks. And so they've been working really hard for over a month now, and they're really excited to be on the track team and helping select the sessions that will make up DrupalCon Asia. Great. Uh, so this kind of jumps into our Thursday, <clears throat> excuse me, our Thursday con activities. Um, so we are planning on having four training sessions. Uh, one is, again, the Drupal in a day type training, something that's a little bit more entry level. There's not going to be a charge for that training. And then there will be two um, intermediate, or excuse me, three intermediate and advanced trainings um, for about 50 people each. We are um, accepting training session um, uh, proposals right now. So if you are uh, a trainer or have a great idea for a training, please go to the website and submit your um, training proposal. And uh, Amanda works with a training selection committee, uh, Amanda and Tina do. And uh, Amanda, do you want to talk about how the, is the training selection works, if it's different or similar to the session selection? Yeah, it's very similar, actually. Um, we definitely don't get as many submissions as sessions, um, but we ask that people submit for trainings. As you see, we have the different kinds of trainings, and we work together with a committee that also involves the Drupal Association. During training selection, the Drupal Association plays no part in selecting the sessions besides notifying people. Um, but in the training selection, because we are part of the group that is charging for the trainings, we do get a partial say. But right now we have Nitty on the committee and we're working to find additional training selection committee members. Um, this is a little more difficult because we want to make sure that we have a selection person that is not going to submit a training. We want to make sure we eliminate all of those biases, so we're working to still flesh out that training selection committee. But we go through and if you look through the training um, link there, you can see what kind of criteria we're looking for. So when we go through with the selection, we have the whole training committee on the phone and we make sure that we identify the trainings that meet those qualifications as well as don't overlap content-wise. We don't want to have two trainings on front-end theming or two trainings on the same thing. So we just really work out the content that we think would be best for the Asian community as well as finding four that work cohesively together. Great. And we also are planning on three summits. Um, we are committed to a business summit, and uh, Rahul Dewan is our lead for that. And we are looking at possibly having a higher ed summit and a government summit. Um, Rachit and Ani have been very passionate about those and uh, are working on proposals for those two summits. If anyone has any other um, summit proposals, feel free to get in touch with um, Amanda or I. So this is our general program plan for um, the schedule for the days. Uh, we This may shift a little bit, um, obviously, uh, but at this point, uh, we're starting on a little bit later uh, start time than what we would do in North America or Europe. Um, but, but essentially it follows a, a similar structure to how we, uh, how we operate uh, the other cons. So again, you can just kind of see Thursday, the training and summits, um, Friday and Saturday, the, the con programming, and then Sunday, the sprints. Um, so speaking of sprints, uh, we have quite a bit of detail on our website. Um, during the con, we will have our uh, contribution lounge so people can sprint throughout the four days. And on Sunday, we are really focusing exclusively on sprints. So we have a first-time sprinter workshop, uh, which is really um, aimed for people who maybe have not contributed uh, back to the project yet. Uh, so it, go, it covers everything from setting up um, Drupal on your machine to identifying issues and what the different types of contributions can be. There's also a core mentored sprint, uh, which is for maybe people who've uh, contributed a little bit, but are just kind of, you know, dipping their toes into, into that world. And so there are sprint mentors available to help them um, answer questions and, and find kind of that next level of engagement there. And then there's the general sprints, which is uh, for people that are just there to sprint and just kind of dive right in. So uh, that, that's something that kind of our more veteran sprinters uh, will participate with. 
And uh, I know that the local community is looking into possibly finding some space for extended sprints, which is great. So possibly uh, there's there may be additional sprinting opportunities before and after the con uh, for those that want to extend their, their time at DrupalCon Asia. And as far as the sprint leads go, um, there's similar to how the um, program team is structured, there's locals and globals. Um, the globals can provide uh, insights as to how uh, sprints have operated in, in other locations. And then the locals are um, you know, helpful for uh, executing it on site. If you want to get involved with sprints, there are a ton of ways to do that. Um, simply by showing up at sprints is, is one way. Um, but you can also be sign up to be a sprint mentor. And if you're interested in helping um, organize the sprints, uh, feel free to sign up as a course core mentor. There's a link there, and I'll, I'll be sending out the slides afterwards, so you can access easily click on all the links. Um, and then there's also a mentoring group that you can um, join to participate in the sprint planning. All right, so um, as far as volunteering for the con, there are still a lot of ways to volunteer. <laughs> we have set up a web form here for people that are interested in volunteering, but maybe uh, don't know exactly what, what uh, volunteering role uh, speaks to them yet. Uh, you can sign up at that web form and stay in communication with us. We will let you know as volunteer opportunities arise. Uh, the Drupal cons, Across the world uh, really depend on uh, volunteers so um, anything that people are willing to contribute as far as uh, providing their time is really helpful um, and our main community uh, contacts are listed there if you're really interested in um, community activities or social media or promotion uh, Rachit, Ani and Parth are, are the people to, to reach out to and at the end I'll go over some other ways that people can can kind of get involved or find ways to help uh, help promote the cons um, so one of the great things about DrupalCons is we offer grants and scholarships. Um, DrupalCon is often something that people are very eager to attend but may not financially be able to afford to. Um, and so we have set aside some funds for DrupalCon Asia to make sure that uh, people have access to the con that may not be able to afford to go on their own. Um, one of the things that was important to us is really supporting the um, the area uh excuse me, India and the area immediately around in India, we really want to kind of focus on the South Asia region. So about 80% of those funds will be dedicated to people from that region. And um, coming to India is a dream for people across the world. So we wanted to make sure that uh, people outside of just that South Asia region also have access to that. Uh, so for 20% of the funds will be dedicated to people coming uh, in from abroad. Um, the uh, you are open. The scholarships and grants are open for um, applications now. Those will close on November second, so there's a, about a month and a half left to apply. Uh, and we recommend that you do so um, before then because we we really don't have any ability to extend that. All right, marketing. So I'm going to turn it over to Lee Carver uh, to speak hey, about. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Go ahead, Lee. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Um, my name is Lee Carver. I'm in charge of marketing. I'm actually sort of the representative of the marketing. Oh, go back. Sorry. There we go. That's okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm representative of the whole marketing arm of the Drupal Association. So um, I'm the association's content writer. We have other marketers who are and communicators who are on board. Um, Phil is also probably going to be working on DrupalCon a little bit as well. He is my supervisor. So. The who's who of the marketing team for this DrupalCon, um, we have, aside from myself, we have four main touch, touch point people. So the first is Paul Johnson. He is based out of the UK, and he um, is a veteran at volunteering for DrupalCon on the marketing side. He runs all of the DrupalCon social media accounts and really does a fantastic job. And he and Ani will be running the DrupalCon Asia social media handles together. Parth is going to be handling a lot of what we're calling guerrilla marketing internally. So he's going out to various events in the local region um, and, and trying to drum up some noise and enthusiasm. He has a number of raffle tickets that he'll be, or of, uh, con tickets that he'll be raffling away. And uh, he's working with a whole bunch of local volunteers to just um, drum up excitement in person. And last of all, we have uh, Priyanka, who is working with Nizway. Uh, they're partnering with us to do some more enterprise-level marketing. 
So um, she'll be focusing on, one, creating content for uh, the audience that we're trying to draw to DrupalCon, so mainly uh, Indian audience members, some Asian audience members as well, uh, because that's just frankly a part of the world that we're not all that familiar with. So she's going to be helping with that. She's going to do some outreach to uh, Drupal businesses throughout Asia as well, and we're really excited to have her. And then from a standpoint of uh, content that is created and goes on the DrupalCon Asia site, uh, that will mainly be coming from us at the Drupal Association, so uh, branded emails, blogs, and a variety of social and paid campaigns will be us. So because I'm a very visual person, I went ahead and put together a diagram of who our volunteers are and what their responsibilities are. Uh, so as you can see, there's those of us at the Drupal Association at top creating content, and that feeds down into the DrupalCon Asia site. And so Paul and Ani are manning what I think of as the tweet cannon, so they're, they're sending all of that content out through social media. Uh, Priyanka will be working on business interest and, again, advising us and helping us create regional specific content, and that actually does feed back into the DrupalCon Asian site. And then last of all is Parth, who is doing the guerrilla marketing, and he will be uh, just going out and, and being the face of how excited we are and working with locals to really drum up some excitement. All right, great. Thanks, Lee. You're welcome. Uh, so as far as sponsorship goes, Megan is selling DrupalCon Asia sponsorships, and we want to say a special, special thank you to Raul, Priyanka, Ani, and Rachit, who have been helpful in um, helping us connect with people that want to sponsor uh, DrupalCon Asia. Uh, we've had a really strong um, pickup of sponsorships so far, and, and that's really wonderful. Uh, we have a variety of price points for people that are, are have yet to sign up and are still interested, and the, the prospectus is on the website under the Become a Sponsor section. Um, so as far as a little bit of the behind the scenes um, process, uh, India has a complex tax system, which I'm guessing uh, if you've done business in India, you're probably familiar with. Um, so we're we're finalizing our, our memorandum of understanding, and that really um, will kind of dictate the um, tax laws as they apply to both sponsorships and um, registrants, people paying uh, ticketing prices. So that will um, dictate how how those taxes are applied and uh, will include any local um, kind of district-wide taxes. Um, so the Drupal Association is investing in this event as a mission-driven initiative. Um, similar to uh, how DrupalCon Latin America was set up, we are operating this as a, as a negative net revenue because it directly supports our mission. Um, and so uh, that's kind of a bit of the behind the scenes as far as how financially um, the budget is structured both from a from a sponsorship and ticketing standpoint, and then expenses. So we are, we're really excited to come and um, and invest into this region. So the there are a host of ways that people can get involved. Kind of on an indiv individual level, here are the, um, the the ways that are easy to jump in right now. Um, so submit a session or a training. We we again are looking for those session submissions that we can use to build um, a really strong program. And um, as far as trainings go, I was lucky enough to sit in on a training in, at Drupal Camp Delhi. And so I know that there are fabulous trainers and trainings happening um, all over India. So feel free to, to submit away. Um, and the other thing I would really recommend is uh, not just yourself submitting a session, but if you, um, if you heard a really great session by a speaker or if you attended a really great training, um, reach out to those people and, and invite them to, to submit. Uh, frequently, uh, people who are invited to submit uh, will do so. And so that's a really great way to spread the word. Um, also, you can, as I said, you can apply for uh, grants and scholarships through November 4th. Um, we, we have those funds available to make sure that people who, um, uh, the cost of travel may be prohibitive. We want to make sure that we can lower those barriers wherever we can. Um, if you're interested in uh, supporting sprints, you can sign up now to be a sprint mentor. And if you're just interested in volunteering, you're welcome to stay in the loop and sign up for our um, volunteer kind of email list. We'll make sure that, that you're uh, kept abreast of any new opportunities. And most importantly, just ask. So if you are really eager to get involved with one aspect of the con, but you don't quite know the best way to jump right in, just contact one of us on the staff or anybody that you saw mentioned in this presentation kind of in correlation. We have a lot of really great local volunteers and um, point people 
um, you, we can make sure that you get connected with uh, the right person and find the way to be involved in DrupalCon Asia. And of course, when in doubt, use the contact us form on the website that sends uh, an email directly to Tina and she is happy to route you to the right person. Um, so we've talked a bit about what are in our budget and in our plans and some of the things that um, are not in our budget and not in the, the DA's direct plans um, are, are as follows. And these are things that really the, the community could champion and, and run with and we would be happy to support however we can, whether it be by um, you know, promotion or marketing, getting the word out, but they're just not something that we fiscally can support um, or logistically can support. Um, so tri trivia night is a great example. That's something that if you've been to another DrupalCon is something that people get really excited about. And we would be happy to help support that with connecting to um, the people who've run trivia night in the past. Um, but we just don't have it in the budget at this point to be able to produce the event ourselves. Um, extended sprints, I mentioned earlier that local community leads are, are already looking for ways to possibly extend that sprint experience for people. Um, so um, allowing people to sprint either before or after the con. Um, another great thing uh, that, that happens at other Drupal cons is cultural events. So um, I, I remember in Amsterdam there were um, I think a museum pass for one night of the week or um, you know an evening hosted by the local uh, Amsterdam community to kind of get to know the city. So those things are, are we are very welcome uh, for the community to organize and we are happy to promote. Um, another thing that's really exciting uh, is for the Drupal Gangers ideas. So the Drupal Gangers is really essentially the, the partners or spouses of, of Drupalers who come along to the events and are interested in either, you know, going on tours or, or maybe going to a museum together or, or getting to know a city um, as a group. So if anybody has any of those ideas or would like to kind of put together some recommendations, that, that's really wonderful. Uh, so kind of in summary, just where we are and, and what's next. Um, so the Drupal Association, we really, we provide the DrupalCon project management and the process. We kind of provide the structure of how to, how to get this big event done. Um, but really the community fills the program. And so the community is, um, you know, obviously provide, leading the sessions. Um, participating at the sprints, leading those sprints, and, um, and kind of providing those community um, activities that, that, that fill the, the con and really make it what it is. So we, we help uh, kind of organize, make sure we get you know, food there and uh, have, have everything kind of ordered and everything organized for the event. But again, really, uh, I just want to reiterate, like it's the community leads the process and selects the sessions and, and fills those seats. And it's just really a wonderful community event. Um, again, anyone can be involved in a, in a myriad of ways, so feel free to just reach out if you're um, eager to, to participate. And I just want to say from a, from a planning perspective, um, I think DrupalCon Asia activity from the Drupal Association side will really pick up in October. So we have DrupalCon Barcelona in about two weeks, less than. And uh, once we kind of put a bow on that, uh, our team is going to be pretty much solely focused on DrupalCon Asia. So. Uh, look for a lot more updates coming through the website and social media. And um, I, I'm happy to also, uh, if people are kind of curious about the behind the scenes, I'm happy to start posting some regular updates from our team on the the, group, the India Planning DrupalCon Asia group on groups.drupal.org. Um, so I'm curious if we have any questions. Let's take a, take a look. Doesn't look like it. All right, if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to get in contact with us. Um, we're all very open and accessible. Uh, I will say during DrupalCon Barcelona, we may be a slightly less accessible, but for the most part, we are, we are here to answer your questions and, and help connect you with the information you need. Um, so again, I'm Rachel Friesen, and I really appreciate your time and everybody's interest in DrupalCon Asia, and we are all just uh, so thrilled that, that this event is happening and that, that we're getting closer and closer each day. So thank you for participating.